Responsive design is not just about Flexbox creating media queries. In fact, very often the solution for your problems will be these magic functions. Min, Max and Clamp. Because while Flexbox and Grid can solve layout problems, these functions can be used for paddings, font sizes and element sizes. Things where you usually needed a media query can now be made super responsive in only one line of CSS. Let's learn everything about them in just a few minutes. My name is Fabian and you're watching coding to go Let's start with the min function. This one lets you set the smallest of a list of expressions as the value of a CSS property. Let's say this was a container that we need to make responsive. Of course, the main problem is it is too wide for mobile screens. Now, how can the min function be of any use here? Well, the power lies in combining different units on the width property. For example, the fixed unit that we already have for the width, but also another unit like percentages. Now we are basically saying, check which of these values is smaller, 50 EM or 95% of the parent, which is the body. On a desktop screen, 50 EM is smaller, so that would be the width. But when the screen is getting smaller and smaller, suddenly 95% of the screen is smaller than 50 EM. So on a mobile screen, it switches and applies that as the element size. That way the container is never bigger than the screen, because it's only 95% wide. Pretty cool, right? The same concept applies to paddings as well. You can have a big padding on a desktop screen that shrinks down on a mobile screen. Just combine different units and this function will always return the smaller one. So the power of this function is when we combine different CSS units, a flexible one and a fixed one. Now, before we get to my favorite function, which is clamp, let's talk about the max function, which does the exact opposite of min. It returns the biggest of a list of expressions as the value of a property. But how can that be useful? Well, sometimes we want to specify a minimum size. For example, I need my sidebar to be at least 250 pixels wide to display all the child elements properly. But on larger screens, it should be able to grow up to 25% of the screen size. Since max always returns the bigger value, it will be 25% most of the time. But on a mobile screen, 25% is way too small for a proper sidebar. But luckily, in that exact case, 250 pixels is the bigger value. And therefore, max will return that value, which fixes the problem. So I know it might sound counterintuitive, but whenever you need a minimum value, use the max function. And whenever you need a maximum value, use the min function. Now, to be honest, I haven't found that many use cases where max can solve a problem. But what I can tell you is how powerful the clamp function can be. Clamp ensures the final value never goes below min, never goes above max, and always stays at the preferred value while it fits between both. In other words, clamp creates a value that can grow and shrink. You have a min, you have a max, and a preferred value. One of the strongest use cases for this is responsive font sizes, because good and accessible font sizes are quite difficult to achieve. But the problem is, none of the common units we have in CSS for font sizes are truly responsive by themselves. My first recommendation would be avoid pixels for font sizes and use rem instead. Rem is relative to the root font size, usually 16 pixels by default. So a font size of 1.5 rem means 16 times 1.5, which is 24. Now the real problem is large headings on small screens. On a big heading, we usually want to avoid text wrapping. So instead of wrapping the text onto another line, we could just change the font size on different devices. And without the clamp function, you would have to use a ton of media queries to get there. But we don't want to use media queries. So one idea to avoid using media queries would be to use viewport-based units, like VW. For example, 10VW sets the font size to 10% of the viewport width. This makes the headings scale with the screen size. However, using this is very dangerous because of multiple reasons. Firstly, very large screens. On ultra-wide monitors, a heading based only on viewport width becomes insanely large. So there has to be a max limit. Then there's also very small screens. On very narrow mobile screens, the same heading can shrink way too far, and that would be hard to read. So there has to be a lower limit as well. And this is where we use clamp. With clamp, you can pass three values. A minimum font size, then our fluid value, which would be the viewport-based unit, and then a maximum font size. So this would say, never go below 1.8 RAM, Try to follow 10VW and never exceed 5 RAM. As long as 10VW sits between 1.8 and 5 RAM, then that's the font size being used. But for accessibility, there's one more detail to consider. Whenever a clamp uses the viewport unit, like 10VW, then that value will not respond to user zooming. The heading will not change at all, because 10VW is tied only to the viewport size. To fix that, we have to combine that viewport width with a zoomable unit, like RAM for example. We could just say, 7VW, for example, plus 1RAM. So this way, it behaves exactly as before, with the heading growing and shrinking depending on the viewport size, but it also respects user zooming, thanks to the RAM unit. So that is just something to watch out for. Now that we know how to make an element size, its padding and the font size responsive, you might be wondering, what else is important for responsiveness? 
And I would say the most important aspect here would be layout. If you ever wondered what is better for my layout, Flexbox or Grid, then trust me, the answer really depends on what you want to build. So if you want to find out how to decide, then I recommend to watch this video right here. My name is Fabian and this was Coding2Go. I will see you in the next video.